Buddhist poetry is a genre of literature that forms a part of Buddhist discourse. Origins The first examples of Buddhist poetry can be found in traditional scriptures such as the Dhammapada, according to which, Siddhartha Gautama the founder of Buddhism, upon his reaching enlightenment, proclaimed Form Traditionally, most Buddhist sutras have a prose component supplemented by verses known as gatha that reiterate and poetically summarize the themes of preceding prose passages. Gatha functions as a mnemonic device helping the Buddhist practitioner commit to memory a certain doctrinal maxim. And in fact, the earliest extant forms of Buddhist discourse appear in verse, which is hardly surprising, considering that the texts were not originally written, but memorized. Linguistic analysis shows that the prose component of the sutras is likely to have been modified by later editing, while the poems often contain earlier forms of language. This view is confirmed by Japanese Buddhist scholar Hajime Nakamura, who states that the verse components of the Pali Canon actually predate the prose components, the former being a way of facilitating memorization, as the Pali Canon was transmitted orally for the first 300 or so years. Current Buddhology generally maintains that even the liturgical scriptures are products of literary composition. Hence, the study of Buddhist text in general and Buddhist poetry in particular cannot be disengaged from the literary field. But for the sake of classification it is useful to distinguish between Buddhist poetry that is attributed to the Buddha himself, which forms a part of Buddha speech, sk. Buddhavacana, and Buddhist poetry written by Buddhists, which is not included in the sutras. Topic: <inaudible> Buddhist poetry in Sanskrit. A significant number of Buddhist poets composed their works in Sanskrit. One of the first and best known is Asvaosa, of whom two complete great poems, Mahakavya, survive, i.e. the Acts of the Buddha, Buddhakarita, and Handsome Nanda. Sandarananda. The first tells the life story of Sakyamuni Buddha, while the second tells the story of Nanda, the Buddha's handsome cousin, who was guided towards liberation by turning his greatest weakness, desire, into a motivating factor for practice. Fragments of a drama called Sariputraprakarana are also extant, and these may be some of the oldest, perhaps even the oldest example of Sanskrit drama. Asvahosa's verses are often simple yet very suggestive, casting key Buddhist teachings, such as impermanence, in evocatively paced similes. Vahaganam Yatha Sayam Tatra Tatra Samagama Jatau Jatau Tathasalso Janasiya Svajanasiya Ca Like birds in the evening May meet here or there So too from birth to birth One embraces one's kin other verses of Asvaosa capture in vivid images human indecision, uncertainty and sorrow. The following verse describes Nanda at the door of his house, torn between the wish to remain with his beloved wife and the sense of respect that prompts him to leave and meet the Buddha to make amends for neglecting the Buddha's alms round in front of his house. Tan Gauravam Buddhagatam Kakarsa Baryanaraga Punar Akakarsa Sa Niskayan Napi Yeo Na Tasthau Tarams Teringiv Eva Rajahamsa Respect for the Buddha pulled him away Love for his wife pulled him back Undecided, neither he went nor he stayed Like a swan king pressed between waves. Sanskrit poetry is subdivided into three types, verse works padya, prose works gadya, and mixed works kampu. .Nowhere in the Indic tradition is versification taken as the distinguishing feature of literary diction, as all sorts of works, whether philosophical, medical, etc. were composed in verse, for ease of memorization. Several Buddhist authors specialized in mixed verse prose compositions, often retelling traditional stories about the Buddha's previous births jataka. Among the authors writing on the basis of the Jatakas, most prominent is perhaps Aryasura. Other beautiful collections of literary Jatakas are those of Haribata and Gopadatta. Haribata's collection includes a concise version of the life story of Sakyamunabuddha. He describes Mara's dejection after understanding the Buddha's victory and superiority in the following verse Evam ukte de Sakyandra Domukha Kusumayudha Hato Hamiti Kasthina Visasada Mahim Likan After the Lord of the Sakyas had said this 
the flower arrows God, face downcast, thinking, I am undone, sank down, writing on the earth with a stick. This is reminiscent of a famous verse from Kalidasa's Kumarasambhava, and the probably intended contrast between the two verses is itself suggestive. Evam vidini Devarsau parsve pitor adhamuki. Lilakamalapatrani ganayam asa parvati. While the divine sage was thus speaking, at the side of her father, face downcast, Parvati counted the lotus petals of her play. Kalidasa celebrates the budding presence of the god of love in Parvati's mind, as she is thrilled to hear a discussion about her future husband. Haribada describes the love god's defeat at the time of the Buddha's awakening. Parvati is holding lotus petals, Mara is holding a wooden stick. Another important type of mixed verse prose works is Sanskrit drama, Nataka, and here King Harsadeva deserves special mention. The patron of the great Chinese monk Zanzong composed the Nagananda, an outstanding drama based on the traditional story of Jimatavahana, prince of the Vidyadharas. While perfectly at ease within the conventions of court poetry, including the depiction of love and attraction, Harsadeva's Nagananda is suffused with Buddhist reflections on compassion and on the futility of hatred, and on impermanence and the inevitability of death. The following words are spoken by a brave Naga boy to his mother, who is suffering from extreme sorrow as her child will soon be sacrificed to the voracious bird Garuda. Kratakarati Prathamam Yata Jatam Anatyata Datriva Janani Paskat Tata Sokasya Ka Krama Impermanence embraces the newborn Like a midwife, first And the mother, afterwards What proper place is there for sorrow? Another genre where Buddhist poets excelled is the good sayings, subhasita, collections of proverb-like verses often dealing with universally applicable principles not so specific to the Buddhist tradition. One such collection of verses is attributed to the Buddha himself, and preserved in different versions as the Udhanavarga Sanskrit, Dhammapada Pali, Dharmapada Prakar, T and Gandhari. This collection often uses similes upama to exemplify key Buddhist teachings, Nasti Kamasamo Hai Ago Nasti Dosasamo Graha Nasti Mohasamam Jalam Nasti Tirznasama Nadi There is no flood like desire There is no possession like hatred There is no net like delusion There is no river like craving other significant collections are Ravagupta's Aryakosa, Vararusi's Gathasataka, Ratnamati's Prakarana, and several others. One of the largest anthologies of good sayings extant in Sanskrit is by a Buddhist abbot, i.e. Vidyakara's Subhasitaratnakosa. The Subhasita genre became also well established in Tibet, one of the greatest examples being Sakya Pandita, an early and influential master of the Sakyapa school, known to have been fluent in Sanskrit from an early age. Arya Santadeva's entrance into the practice of the Bodhisattvas Bodhikaryavatara partly resembles a collection of good sayings, yet in many ways defies classification. It is written in a number of rather different literary registers, resembling court poetry in places, while being very dramatic in others. Some verses are indeed good sayings in both content and style, while an entire chapter is written in the confident and terse tone of a Madhyamaka philosophical text, with the usual alternation of objections and rebuttals. The work is a compendium of Mahayana practice, covering the six perfections paramita, which may be said to function as its main structural guideline. The Compendium of Perfections by Aryasura is another such guide, containing numerous excellent verses and organized even more systematically in terms of the six perfections. Other guides to Buddhist practices were written in the form of versified letters, among these, the Letter to a Friend, Sir, Leka, and the Garland of Gems. Ratnavali of Nagarjuna deserve special mention, not just for their content and style, but also for being very influential in India and Tibet. Another remarkable epistle extant in Sanskrit is Kandragamin's Letter to a Disciple, Sisyaleka, also outlining the Buddhist path for a disciple. These letters exemplify the friendly and respectful relationship between Buddhist masters and their patrons, who received advice on a number of different topics, both worldly and supramundane. Buddhist poets wrote very many praises of the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, and of bodhisattvas and meditational deities. 
The 150 verses of Matter – Sita seem to have been particularly popular. Nandipriya's extensive commentary on this work still survives in the Tibetan Tangyur Satapankasatkanamastatradika, Burgya Lana Bcu Pa Zs Bya Bai Bstod Pai Grel Pa – Tg Bstod Chogs Ka 116A5-178A1. Matter – Sita's verses use accessible language, with strong echoes from different types of Buddhist literature, and transmit a sense of great devotion all the more highlighted by the poet's restrained and measured diction Samyaksambodabhijasya Chitaratnasya Tesa Te Tvam Eva Vira Sarajnyo Dor Tassayatero Jana Seed of Perfect Awakening Gem of Your Mind You, Hero, Know Its Essence Others are far. Buddhist praises often have didactic purposes. Some of them, like Nagarjuna's Katustava, expound philosophical ideas of specific schools, while praises of bodhisattvas and meditational deities often facilitate readers, listeners in acquiring familiarity with important features that become the focus of recollection and or formal meditative contemplation. Buddhist authors also wrote on prosody, chandas, offering their own poetic examples for different types of Sanskrit meter. Two notable works on Sanskrit poetry are the Chandoratnakara of Ratnakara Santi and the Vr. Tamalastuti of Jnanasramitra, by two great contemporary Vikramasila masters who were active on several intellectual fronts and well-known exponents of Yogacara thought. The Vr. Tamalastuti is particularly striking, it consists in verses of praise of the Bodhisattva of Wisdom, Manjusri, which at the same time offer information about the verse that is being exemplified, such as its name and the position of the Sazura yati. A simple example, for the Sarana meter Prasita Bhagavan Vulakaya Manak Jadam Janam Imam Tavadekasaranam Be well disposed, Bhagavat. Look a bit at this dull person whose only refuge is you. Pali poetry follows very similar patterns as Sanskrit poetry, in terms of prosody, vocabulary, genres, and poetic conventions. Indeed, several Pali authors were well conversant with Sanskrit and even composed works in that language, such as, for example, the Anuradhasataka. Sanskrit meters and poetic conventions were more broadly very influential throughout Southeast Asia, even in respect to vernacular languages, Thai, Burmese, etc., also thanks to the popularity of literary aesthetic ideas from the tradition of Alamkarasastra, the science of ornaments, regarding the purposes and nature of literature. While discussing praises, literary praises of meditational deities have been briefly mentioned, this brings us into the fold of Buddhist tantric poetry, which is esoteric in character and thus often laden with evocative symbols meant to be understood only thanks to one's relationship with a living master. Notable are the songs of practice, Karyajiti, written in Apabramsa rather than Sanskrit, and including among their authors the great accomplished ones, Mahasiddha, such as Saraha, Santipa, and many others. Buddhist poetry in Asia Buddhist poetry, like the bulk of the scriptures produced by Buddhists, is not limited to compositions in Pali and Sanskrit, it has flourished in practically every language that Buddhists speak. Notable examples in the Tibetan tradition are works of Milarepa. Chinese Buddhist tradition is particularly rich in poetic expression. In the poetry of Bai Juyi, for instance, we see a tension between the secular and Buddhist poetic expression. Many Buddhists considered poetry as an attachment and advocated against it, despite the fact that the scriptures revered by them were abundant in poetic forms. Bai is credited with the coinage of the expression Kyogen Kigo, Kuang Yan Chi Yu lit. Deranged words and embellished language, which, to his view, referred to futility of poetic expression in comparison to Buddhist practice. Perhaps, the most successful Chinese Buddhist poet to resolve this paradox was Zhao Ran Zhao Ran 730-799, who proposed treatment of poetry as an intellectual instrument of Buddhist practice. Chan Buddhism ch. Chan, Jap. Zen provided a rich ground for Buddhist poetry. Chan Buddhists created a complex language in which indirection, suggestion, ambiguity, paradox, and metaphor are prized over straightforward explanation. This complex language of Chan literature is also applied in Chan poetry. Chan Buddhists asserted that though enlightenment cannot be explained in ordinary terms, poetry, as a special language, can point the way. 
As the Chan monk Jufan Wuyang wrote, the subtleties of the mind cannot be transmitted in words, but can be seen in words. In Chan poetry, images as simple as the moon, clouds, boats, reflections in water, plum and lotus, bamboo and pine took on complex connotations based in Chan ideas, famous verbal exchanges, and Chan and Buddhist texts. To exemplify the use of specialized Buddhist metaphor, this well known poem by Hanshan Tang Dynasty will suffice. Korean poets wrote mostly in classical Chinese. Japanese poets also contributed to Buddhist poetic tradition in classical Chinese, e.g., the poetic genius of Kakai inspired many poets of later generations. Kakai, in turn, was influenced by Zhao Ran's Shi 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 Shi, as the latter is included in Kakai's magnum opus of poetics, the Bunkyo Hifuron Wen Jing Mi Fu Lun. In medieval Japan, Buddhist poetry was accorded a special status of a separate genre within the corpus of the Waka collections. Topic. Japanese Buddhist poetry 1. The earliest extant collection of the Japanese poetry, the Maniyoshu, contains a preface JP. Jo -shu or Daishi TC to two poems on the love of parents towards their children. Sakyamuni expounds truthfully from his golden mouth, I love all things equally, the way I love my child, Rahula, he also teaches that no love is greater than the love for one's child, even the greatest of saints cherishes his child. Who, then, among the living creatures of this world could fail to love children claimed as one's own? There are several prefaces and poems in the Maniyoshu that mention the name of Buddha Sakyamuni J.P. Shaka Niorai Shi Jia Ru Lai, an honorific title of Siddhartha Gautama, Buddhist temples, JP, Terasi, monks and nuns. Point two. Among the treasures of Yakushi Ji Temple in Nara, there are stone blocks dating from the Nara period, modeled as the footsteps of the Buddha, JP. Busokaseki Fu Zhu Shi. These blocks contain poems in Manyogana that may be considered the oldest Buddhist waka Japanese language poems known to date. These poems are usually referred to as Busokasekika lit. Poems on stone imprints of Buddha's feet. Fo Zhu Shi Gei. Consider the following example. Both examples above have one trait in common. Namely, the focus on the physical characteristics of the Buddha is prominent. The golden mouth of the Buddha in the Maniyoshu and the feet of the Buddha in the stone inscriptions relate to the marks of perfection of the Buddha's body, speech, skt, Mahapurusa, lit. Signs of a great person. In the Heian period, Buddhist poetry began to be anthologized in the imperial anthologies JP, Chokasenshu Kai Zanji. Among the 21 imperial anthologies, 19 contain Buddhist Tonka lit. Short Waka starting with the Shui Wakashu, compiled between 1005 and 1007 CE. The first imperial anthology to treat Buddhist Tonka as a separate genre, i.e. Shakyoka lit. Poems of Sakyamuni's Teaching. Shi Jiao Ge is the Senzai Wakashu, which has an exclusive section dedicated to the Buddhist poems in Volume 19. Di Shi Juan. Among the most famous poets who wrote Shakyoka are Saigyo, Jakuren, Kamo no Chome, Fujiwara no Shunze, Jian, Noin, Dogen, Tuna, etc. Many of the so called 36 poetry immortals wrote Buddhist poetry. Shakyoka can be subdivided according to the ten following motifs Buddhas and Bodhisattvas Eminent monks, nuns A passage from a sutra A passage from commentatorial corpus of the Buddhist canon Buddhist experience meditative, devotional states Mental states, such as delusion, passion, anger, etc. that are important in the Buddhist discourse Religious deeds Related to temples and shrines Buddhist views of nature Natural phenomena alluding to Buddhist themes e.g. transience of flowers blooming these motifs are not mutually exclusive and are very often combined within a given poem. One of the most famous collections of Japanese tonka of the Kamakura period, the Hayakunin issue contains several shakyoka, for instance Poem 95, by Jian also anthologized in the Senzai Wakashu, Wan Shi Chi Zha Zhang no 1137 In later periods, as tonka was slowly being overshadowed by Renga and Haiku, the two poetic forms that derived from tonka, such famous poets as the Seven Worthies of Renga, 
JP Ranga Shichikan Lien Gechi Xian of the Muromachi period, Sogi, and still later, Matsuo Basho, Kobayashi Isa, among many others, carried on the tradition of Buddhist poetry with their compositions. The nostalgic feeling of the ancient capital, Nara, interspersed with the scent of chrysanthemums symbol of Japanese monarchy and the old Buddha statues, captures well the aesthetic ideals of Sabi and Yugen in this famous haiku. Although these three lines appear to be a mere utterance of almost prosaic quality, the imagery invoked is far from simplistic. Buddhas, emperors, passage of time, the ethereal beauty of flowers that presents itself obliquely, i.e., appealing to scent rather than sight, all suggest that the poet sought to use language as a medium of condensed imagery to map an immediate experience, whose richness can only be read in the blanks. Here the poet uses the image of evanescence of our world, the dewdrop, one of the classical allegories of the Buddhist teaching, to express grief caused by the death of his daughter. In theory, Buddhism teaches its followers to regard all the vicissitudes of life as transitory and ephemeral, akin to magic apparitions without substance or dewdrops soon to evaporate under the sun. Yet, a father's loss of his child is more than reason can counter. Topic Buddhist poetry and modernity As Japan reached the era of industrialized modernity, many of the poets of the Meiji period started to experiment with the European styles of poetic composition. Some poets, notably Miyazawa Kenji, a devout Buddhist who expressed his convictions in his poetry and fiction, often composed poems with Buddhist overtones. His aim Ni Mo Makezu, Yu Nimamekezu known to practically every Japanese today, takes its theme Chapter 14, Peaceful and Joyous Deeds, J.P. Anrakugyo and Le Xing from the Lotus Sutra Miao Fa Lien Hua Jing, which Kenji revered, another Buddhist poem that remains well known today, but for non-religious reasons, is the Iroha poem from the Heian period. Originally written in Manyogana and attributed to Kakai, this Buddhist poem contains every kana precisely once, and is learned in Japanese primary schools mainly for this reason. Many old-style Japanese dictionaries adhere to the Iroha order. A modern Indian Sanskrit poet, Vanakavi Dr. Manamohan Acharya, wrote Sri Gautama Buddha Panchakam in simple and lucid Sanskrit through lyrical style. Topic Bibliography F. Bernhard, Udanavarga, Einleitung, Beschreibung der Handschriften, Textausgabe, Bibliographie, Gatingen, Vandenhoek and Ruprecht, 1965 J. Breen and M. Taewon. Shinto in History, Ways of the Kami. Honolulu, University of Hawaii Press, 2000. ISBN 978-0-7007-1170-3 GCC. Chong, T. R., and Milarepa, The Hundred Thousand Songs of Milarepa. Kessinger Publishing, 2006. ISBN 978-1-4254-8688-4 E. Cranston. Awaka Anthology. Stanford University Press, 1998. ISBN 978-0-8047-3157-7 K. Crosby and A. Skilton. The Bodhikaryavatara, Oxford, Oxford University Press, 1998 W.T. De Berry et al. Sources of Japanese Tradition, 2nd ed. Volume 1, From Earliest Times to 1600, N.Y., Columbia Univ. Press. 2001 ISBN 978-0-231-12139-2 D. Dimitrov, The Legacy of the Jewel Mind. On the Sanskrit, Pali and Sinhalese works of Ratnamati. A Philological Chronicle Napoli, Unior D.A.A.M., 2016 M. Gibson and H. Murakami. Tantric Poetry of Kakai Kobo Daishi, Japan's Buddhist Saint, with excerpts from the Mahavarokana Sutra and I. Singh's Commentary of the Sutra. Fredonia, N.Y., White Pine Press, 2008. ISBN 978-0-934834-67-4 M. Han, ed. Ratnakarasanti's Chandora Nakara, Kathmandu, Nepal Research Center, 1982 M. Han, ed. Nagarjuna's Ratnavali. Volume. I. The Basic Texts Sanskrit, Tibetan, Chinese, Indica et Tibetica, B.D. I. E. V. 208 pp. Bon, Indica et Tibetica Verlag, 1982. M. Han, ed. T.R. Invitation to Enlightenment, Texts by Matrishita and Chandragaman, Berkeley, Dharma Publishing, 2000 M. Han, ed., and Haribata. Poetical Visions of the Buddha's Former Lives, 17 Legends from Haribata's Jatakamala, New Delhi, Aditya Prakashan, 2011. M. Han, S.S. Bolkar, Lata Mahesh Diokar, and M.A. Diokar, eds. 
Vertimala's Tutti of Jnanasvarmitra with Sakiraksita's Vertimala Studi Viverti, Critical Edition, Pune, Dashena and Aditya Prakashan, New Delhi, 2016. A. Hanish, ed., and Aryasora. Aryasora's Jatakamala. Philologische Untersuchungen zu den Legenden 1 bis 15. Teal 2. Philologischer Kommentar Marburg, 2005, Indica et Tibetica 43 over 1 D. Ingalls, Sanskrit Poetry, from Vidyakara's Treasury. Cambridge, Mass. Harvard University Press, 1968. K. Ishihara Shiyuan Ching Ji. Shakyoka no Kenkyu, Hachidishu o Chushin to Shite. Shi Jiao Ge no Yan Ju Ba Dai Ji Wo Zhang Shin Toshite Kyoto, Dohasha Shupan Tong Peng Shi Chu Ban, 1980. LCCN, 82-805787, WebCat, BN 0163849-7, WorldCat OCLC, 16319140 E. H. Johnston, ed., and Asvaosa. The Buddhakarita or Acts of the Buddha. New Delhi, Mutalal Banarsidas Pub, Bilingual ed. 1998. ISBN 978-81-208-1279-6 E.H. Johnston, ed., and Asvaosa. Sondarananda of Asvaosa. Oxford University Press, London, 1928. E.H. Johnston, T.R. Sondarananda Ernanda the Fair. London, Oxford University Press, 1932. M.R. Kale, ed. T.R. Kalidasa's Kumarasambhava Cantos I-7, Bombay, The Standard Publishing Company, 1917. J. Konishi and E. Minor. A History of Japanese Literature. Volume 1. Princeton, N.J., Princeton University Press, 1984. ISBN 978-0-691-06592-2 H. Kern, ed., and Aryasora. The Jatakamala, Stories of Buddha's Former Incarnations. Cambridge, Mass., Harvard University Press, 1891, Rep., 1943. T. Kubo and A. Uyama, T. R., The Lotus Sutra. Revised 2nd ed. Berkeley, California, Namada Center for Buddhist Translation and Research, 2007. Translation from the Chinese of Kumarajiva. ISBN 978 one 89 9 wr Le Fleur. The Karma of Words, Buddhism and the Literary Arts in Medieval Japan. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1983. ISBN 978-0-520-05622-0 P. Cavernay. An Anthology of Buddhist Tantric Songs, Bangkok, White Orchid Press, 1986 H. Luders, Das Sariputra Prakarana, Ein Drama des Asvaosa, Sitzingsbericht der Königlich Prussischen Akademie der Wissenschaften 17 1911, pp. 388-411 D. E. Mills. The Buddha's Footprint Stone Poems. Journal of the American Oriental Society, Vol. 80, No. 3 July, Sep. 1960, pp. 229-242 Available on JSTOR J.S. Mostow. Pictures of the Heart, the Hayakunin Issue in Word and Image. Honolulu, Hawaii, Univ. of Hawaii Press, 1996. ISBN 978-0-8248-1705-3 S. Mukhopadhyaya. The Jatakamala of Aryasora. Delhi, Akshaya Prakashan, 2007. W. H. Nienhauser, Jr. The Indiana Companion to Traditional Chinese Literature. Volume 1. Indiana University Press, 1985. ISBN 978-0-253-32983-7. J. S. Pandey, ed. Bodhistotra Samgraha. Delhi, Mutalal Banarsidas, 1994 R. Pandi. Writing and Renunciation in Medieval Japan, The Works of the Poet-Priest Kamo no Chome. Michigan Monograph Series in Japanese Studies. Ann Arbor, Michigan, Center for Japanese Studies, University of Michigan, 1998. ISBN 978-0-939512-86-7 N. Sakari. Inch by Inch, 45 Haiku by Isa. Albuquerque, La Alameda Press, 1999 ISBN 978-1-888809-13-8 E.U. Ramirez Christensen and Shinke. Hearts Flower, The Life and Poetry of Shinke. Stanford, Calif, Stanford University Press, 1994. 
ISBN 978-0-8047-2253-7 A. Skilton. How the Nagas were pleased by Harsha and the shattered thighs by Basa. New York, New York University Press, 2009 D. Smith. The Birth of Kumara. New York, New York University Press, 2005. J. S. Speyer, T. R. The Jatakamala or Garland of Birth Stories by Arya Sura. London, Oxford University Press, 1895. P. L. Vaidya, ed., and Aryasura. Jatakamala. Darbanga, Mathila Institute, 1959. B. Watson, T. R. Po Chu I, Selected Poems. New York, Columbia University Press, 2000. ISBN 978 0 231 11839 2. B. Watson. Buddhism in the Poetry of Po Chu I. Eastern Buddhist 21, No. 1, 1988, 1-22. Egan, Charles, and Charles Chu. Clouds Thick, Whereabouts Unknown, Poems by Zen Monks of China. New York, Columbia University Press, 2010. ISBN 978-0-231-15038-5 References External links Buddhist Poetry Reader's Guide from Shambhala Publications A Sketch of Buddha's Life, contains many of the early Pali poems. The Dhammapada, e.g. Buddha's Enlightenment Poem, 153-154. The Senzeshu in Japanese, cf. Volume 19 She Selected Translations and an Introduction to Waka. Search Engine of the Manyoshu in Japanese. A fan website on Miyazawa Kenji with translations of works. A Buddhist poetry fan site. Sacred Poetry from Around the World Jerome's niece A collection of poetry dharma submitted by readers. Buddhist Poetry Review